<laughs> well, hi, Chris. <laughs> All right, um, intro to this video. So what we're gonna do today, I asked a lot of people what colors they thought I should do on my leading edge slats. And a lot of you wanted orange, so I did orange. So we're gonna get those painted up on this video. Also, we're working more on the wings. We're gonna do some testing on my O-ring fuel doors and uh, put in a bunch of rivets. So let's get right at it. Back to work. It's physics, math, and engineering. Machine it, draft it, build it, test it, break it. Every time something new gets built, the entire world advances. Laying in bed at night, it's designing new parts, designing new suspension, designing new wings. Here's the gas door, here's the bottom side. Got an O-ring groove right here. And some asked on an earlier video, how, many, how am I gonna keep the fuel from leaking through the studs? Well, the studs don't penetrate clear through. The, they're drilled from this side and tapped, and they're left an eighth inch from the end. So there is no place for fuel to make contact with the screw. And I eliminate all the rivets that would hold nut plates in and then on this side, the O-ring is on the outside edge of the door. So the fuel doesn't get to this side of the screw hole. So there's no way for it to get out of the door itself. So I'm gonna make a test right here. I quickly, I'm about to test it. I made the test. If you look inside this container, you can see the door. I've attached it in here the same way you seal it into a gas tank. And I'm only gonna put in half the screws on the lowest torque setting of a drill. It's just barely snug. And I wanna see if it will hold fuel with all the screws loose and half of them missing. And then if I put in the rest of the screws and torque it down, I know I've got an added level. We're already putting it together over here. Dylan's getting this done. He's ta taping off around everywhere. We're gonna bond the gas tank lid ring into the tank permanently so we got a nice clean line around it so we got a lot to do i'm just riveting this together got half the rivets coming from one direction half from the other i've got a seal i put in there squished it together so this should be water type end in the lid test on one side a hole to fill it on the other finish riveting this together let it dry fill it clear full back to work what we're doing now, we're doing a fuel door, inspection door, service door test. Currently, half the screws are in here. This is full all the way to the top. The reason I did that is I wanted to cause a volume head pressure that is high enough to exceed by 150% of what the max pressure that will occur inside the wing is. So far, Woohoo! There's not a drop, bone dry on my hands. So we're gonna let this sit. I've got a couple of cars parked all the way around this, make sure no one comes in over and drives into my test. We're gonna leave this all day. We're gonna get back, back inside, build some wing skins. You guys know the drill, back to work.
Okay, I've just finished sanding this off. If you guys are wondering what grit, I use 120. Um, I did, did some testing on this right here, just with different um, tank sealers. And the difference between a no sanding versus a Scott Bright finish versus a 120 grit finish, if you're wondering, if you don't prep it, even if you cleaned it, you can get your fingernail and scratch it off. And I know that the pressure tries to hold it on, but I'm actually peeling off the bonding tank sealer. If you use Scotch Bright, I had to work at it with my thumbnail like crazy. I would say it would never come off. However, I could eventually get it off with a Scotch Bright finish. I did another section with 120 grit. I tried everything, a screwdriver in my hand, you actually have to scrape the metal and to get it off, it bonds perfect. So you guys, it's worth it. I know it's a lot more work. Wherever you're gonna put your tank sealer, get out a 120 grit, really work it, then put your tank sealer on and it is not gonna come off later. So I've now got these all riveted in and I've used this sealer. I'll get a close up for you and show you in a second of what brand and make this is. This is really runny. It's a much thinner viscosity, and I always like to use this between aluminum. Um, you could use some of the thicker paste, which I actually prefer this for other areas, but I'll use both. But this stays thin enough that I can baste both sides, put it together, put Clicos in it, push it, and it has enough, um, it's thin enough viscosity that it will run out and give you a perfect seam. So when I feel the underside of this, it's still perfectly flush. If I use this, which some people use between two pieces of metal, it's so thick that it usually creates a step. And then a lot of times when you put the rivets in, it dimples it. And you can see those waves and imperfections in the wing. It's fine, but I prefer not to do that. So this is used between. And then now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through and sand and clean this up. And I'm gonna use this product, which is a two part. And I'm masking this off here and out here, and I'm gonna cover the heads of the rivet and this joint with this one, and this is really thick. This one will build a perfect bridge over top of all these rivet heads, fill in a nice feathered seam around this hard 90, and it will give it a second layer of protection for leaks. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. Um, some of you may ask why some wings the inspection doors are on top, and some wings, the inspection doors like airlines are on the bottom, and kind of what the debate is on why people do it both ways. If you put an inspection door on the bottom, you get the benefit of not having more screws or trip lines from any kind of a joint happening on top where your critical airflow is over the top of the wing. So for aerodynamics, speed, and to kind of help keep that stall speed as low as possible by not having more imperfections on the top, you always want to put the inspection doors on the underside of the wing. There are people that like to put them on the top and it's starting to trend back to the bottom, and let me tell you why. Early on, aircraft with wet wings started to have a problem where they change a door, pull it off, fix a leak, put the door back on, then the door would leak. And they found that if the door was on top of the wing, you wouldn't notice the leak. You could put it back on and the fuel was underneath it. And that seemed to be better. Most mechanics like that. Hey, you won't notice the leak. The problem with that is you're not noticing a leak. Houston, we have a problem. Unless the plane's absolutely full and then you get this little trace. And ultimately, I guess that's fine. The downside is this. I personally would rather know that I have a leak and fix it or do a system that makes it not leak. No one ever wants to hear the truth. If you have a, an inspection door on the top and you close it up and it does leak, but you never notice it because the fuel is never touching against that door, well, that means when it rains, the water leaks into the tank or when you fly, if you put that on and you filled up your tank and did all your tests and you said, great, it never leaked. Okay, full truth, here we go. I would rather know that it does leak and water isn't going into the tank. So over time, they started to realize that someone did a bad job at a top tank inspection bay, the water in flight or on the ramp or snow drained into the wing. So 
I left it to go on the bottom. I want to know if there's a leak so I can repair it. I think I'm going to have a good luck with this door. The testing looks great. So I'm going to go ahead and sand this, put the thicker layer on it, double protected. We got a lot to do. Let's get back to work. <laughs> right now, I'm pulling off the tape while it's still very wet. And I taped it just outside the line of where the O-ring will sit. So I've got this clean edge. The O-ring rides about a quarter inch outside this hole line so that that O-ring mates on a perfectly machined finish. One down, three to go, and then the other wing. <laughs> Got to work. Oh man, that is so flush. Perfect. <laughs> You know what, I think this is the first sheet I've done in a long time that I didn't get one smiley face rivet. All right, since someone's gonna ask what a smiley face rivet is, if you've been doing rivets for as many years as I have, we've all done a bunch of them. Essentially, this is the tool that squeezes together. If this little rivet head, as I was doing it, wasn't centered in here and it offset to one edge because you flinched, it would make a little half circle in the head of the rivet or pinch half of this off. That's, it looks like a smiley face, but it's a sad face because it means you gotta drill it out and put in a new one. Okay, what we're doing right now, you can see I've got these little spacers pre-coat on right there. They just look like this, and I'll try and describe it real fast. There's ribs that go between here. This is the fuel pay zone. There's dividers in between. Those dividers are slosh bay, so they're totally blocked off except for pass-throughs on the front and the back corners and the top breather pass-through for the tank. Right here, I wanted the ribs of the tank to carry all the way through, all the way to the front, all the way to the back, rather than pieces connected together. They're solid ribs tip to tip. And so I put these spacers so the ribs can pass through here. The spacer is 50 thousandths thick, which is the thickness of the bottom shelf and top shelf of the rib uh, angles. And then the ribs actually have machined in them rather than trying to put a, a fuel tank end bay right here and have a, a, a piece and a piece and a piece and a piece. I machine the ribs so this can slide through all the ribs as one giant piece with a tight fit and rivet it all together to make the tank sealed. A gap under here, a gap on the top. This will get closed off, a wrap to the back. And it just makes sure that when I go to dip to rivet, the bottom skin and the top skin, I put in the tolerances of the thickness of the aluminum. A lot of times you see aluminum, they'll just go ahead and let it dip the thickness of sheet metal and make a little curve. Um, it works fine, but I thought it was just a little more work to go ahead, make custom spacers, put them in between, and use a one-piece end at the front and back of the tank. Um, this is the small one, there's actually a bigger one, so two different sizes. I don't know, I hope that makes sense. It will when it all goes together. Okay, so what I've done here, I've got all these shim spacers just glued in place. Now, this is actually the fuel tank sealer, the thin, very thin viscosity so that it goes tight. And this doesn't actually have the tank seal joint right here. This is the back side of the flange of where the tank will be. So the glue joint or the tank sealer joint is actually inside of each of these. This is just so that it can dry, hold them in place. So when I put the next component on, I don't have to try and line up three sets of holes. But there's so many different shim spacers on both wings. I want to make as many common parts as possible, but they all look the same, slightly different lengths. So what I did, it was really simple to make this one and this one make sure all the holes line up perfectly. The length is different than the next one, next one, and next one, but I made sure that the bottom, front and back, top, front and back, right wing and left wing, front and back are all the same. And I labeled them with a one. Phase one from the plane going outbound. One, two, three, four. And then I labeled all of them so that after I laser cut them, bay one, bay four, and you can't screw it up because all the little pieces, we could spend hours trying to hunt down and flip and twist to get the holes to align. So little, little steps on the computer save hours later. So that's how I did it. I'm super pumped. Let's get back to work. All right, guys, this is the middle of the night. We've been working inside. 
I'm gonna get a pump on this and get it drained out, but you can still see <laughs> full of the top. There's not a drop anywhere. It's completely dry, so we're gonna call this test done. Half the screws in it, never needed to tighten them up, so I'm good. Let's get them in the wing.